Welcome into Duval Daily presented by GinJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Thursday, April 11th, second show of the day. Got a six pack of Jaguars questions that you guys submitted over on Twitter. Really appreciate the feedback. Going to answer six of these questions for y'all here today. Going to be mostly draft related, moving towards the draft, you know, only two weeks left until the NFL draft kicks off on Thursday, April 25th. Fired up to get into this. Really appreciate y'all's support. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. All right, so let's dive into these questions here. Eric on Twitter asks, do you think the Jaguars try and move up in the second and target a wide receiver or corner? And if so, who would be the target? Eric, for me, I think it's very possible that that is a, a strategy that Jaguars try to employ. Uh, they, t- they have two fairly early fourth round picks. They have a pick in the first, second, and third round. So they do have some capital to move around potentially if they really value a cornerback or wide receiver. Um, if they go CB in round one, they could move up for any number of wide receivers in the second round, move up from 48. Uh, you know, Keon Coleman, is it possible he drops out of the first round? Xavier Worthy, the ultimate speed threat in this draft, right? A guy who set the combine record. But Worthy is a very small receiver, but also a guy that he's not just speed. Like, he can throttle. He, he can run routes. He can get open at all three levels of the field. Troy Franklin, a really explosive wide receiver. You've got Lad McConkey, Ricky Pearsall. The list goes on and on for wide receivers that they could trade up for in the second round. Um, if they go wide receiver in round one, I think it's even more likely that they trade up for a cornerback because while I do think this is a deep cornerback class, it's an even deeper wide receiver class. So you could certainly just wait at 48 for a wide receiver to drop to you and probably feel really good about who falls to you. Um, at, at corner, maybe not as much, but I could definitely see them trading up for um, an Ennis Rakestraw if he falls into the second round. I think he's a a almost a prototype for what they would like at the cornerback position. Um, and then Kool-Aid, if he somehow fell with the Jones fracture, not really sure how things are going there. Maybe just some other guys bump him down the board a little bit, right? I would not be shocked if they tried to trade back into the first round for a wide receiver either. That would not surprise me one bit. So very good question there. Uh, yeah, I think it's very possible the Jaguars trade uh back into the first round or up into the second round to land a player that they really value. You've seen Trent Baalke do that throughout his time as a general manager. It's always more likely that a trade doesn't happen, but very good possibility that it does. Uh, Duval Gator asks, with all the debate uh, uh, on Duval Twitter, where do you think the Jaguars go with the 17th overall pick? Very straightforward question here. For me, I still think cornerback is most likely. Whether that's at 17 or in a trade down, uh, we've seen Trent Baalke trade down as recently as last year. I think that he would potentially like to do that depending on how the board falls um, and acquire more draft capital. But cornerback is the position that the Jaguars have really invested the least in. Ronald Darby is on a very cheap contract. Tyson Campbell on the rookie deal. All the other investments are basically non-investments. You know, late round picks, free agent flyers. It's a crucial, crucial position. And they have not invested very much in it. I think Terrion Arnold or Kool-Aid McKinstry are very likely to end up Jaguars. I personally slightly prefer Kool-Aid because I think he has more experience in press and he's a little bit bit more consistent at this point in his career. I like his length a little bit better, his physicality. But Kool-Aid McKinstry, excellent player in his own right. I just think there's going to be a little bit more highs and lows with him. Uh, But I love both of those guys and I would not be surprised at all if the Jack Wars go cornerback at 17 or in a trade down, and that would be my most likely scenario is cornerback in the first round. If Quinion Mitchell fell to 17 somehow, that could be really nice as well. Chad asks, what do you think the plan slash impact with players going into year two, in particular Britton Strange, Tank Bigsby, Yasir Abdullah? Great question. I think with Britton Strange, they'd like him to be tied in too, but they still really like Luke Farrell, who's still there. Uh, I think they would like him to be a a blocker who can be reliable, but also have some value as an unexpected pass catcher. Like he's not going to be a featured pass catcher, right? You have, even if you don't draft a wide receiver in this class, he's already way down the list of uh, 
pass catching targets for the Jaguars. But he's a guy that has some athleticism, obviously brings a lot as a blocker. If he can continue to just understand and grow within the offense, within the scheme, I think he has a shot to potentially have a much better year two than he did in year one, but he's still not going to be a highly featured guy. That's just kind of the way it is with how this Jaguars roster is shaped right now. Tank Bigsby, he straight up needs to be running back too. He's got the talent to do it. Um, There were some issues early on in his career just with uh, mental mistakes. I think he cleaned up a lot of that down the stretch last year. He needs to be their short yardage back. He needs to be a change of pace for Travis Etienne. Super talented player. Just made some rookie mistakes early on, and I think that he can be a an asset for the Jaguars in 2024, uh, much more so than he was in 2023. I think if you're talking about who's going to make a bigger impact between Strange, Bigsby, and Abdullah, I would point towards Tank Bigsby. Even though he's not going to be a starter, you need to have a RB2 in this league, and they've got some depth at running back, no doubt about it, but I think Tank Bigsby can be a very good running back, too, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then Yasir Abdullah, I would say like a Caleb on Chase on replacement. I think Chase on had close to 300 snaps on defense last year. A lot of special teams as well. Um, can you upgrade what Caleb on Chase on brought in that role? Maybe. I thought that Yasir Abdullah showed a lot more in, in practice and in training camp last year than he did when he actually got on the field, but he didn't get on the field very much. So I do still think that there's some talent there. I think there's a change of pace there, uh, but it would kind of surprise me if he ends up making a big impact in 2024. Um, NFL and Jaguars on Twitter asks, do you believe a trade is likely given the cap that the Jaguars have freed up? I'm assuming we're talking about with that Josh Allen deal. He says, even if Trevor extends, he's likely not causing any headaches this year cap wise. Are there any vets out there in free agency you think the Jaguars might target? I don't think that a trade is likely for like a premium receiver or something like that. I would like it to be potentially. I think that would be a lot of fun. But it takes two to tango, and it's not like wide receiver is the only roster need. And you are getting more expensive. As the years go on, this roster is going to get more expensive, especially with that Trevor Lawrence contract. Now, could they make it work with like a Brandon Ayuk or a T. Higgins? I think they could especially with Shad Khan willing to write checks and move money down the road, all that stuff. Um, but I think ideally the Jaguars would like to get cheaper at the position at wide receiver. All the guys they currently have, you know, their top four receivers are players they've signed as free agents. So I think they would ideally like to get cheaper, not more expensive. Um, free agents, though, is there a free agent out there that they could sign to a one-year deal? I think the answer is yes. If the draft doesn't go the way they want, if they're able to land one of these wide receivers that they really like in the first couple days of the draft, I don't think that they're going to go into the free agent market at all for like a one year rental. But there are guys out there, you know, Michael Gallup, OBJ, Michael Thomas. There's there's some options. Do those get you excited? Not really. But if they get their guy in the draft first, second, third round, I don't think that they look into free agency at wide receiver at all. Checkmark asks, trade up to nine for Odunze or Neighbors or trade 17 for Ayuk? For me, I've kind of waffled back and forth because, you know, I love the idea of landing a surefire wide receiver one who's been there and done that in the NFL going into his prime. But again, he's going to be a lot more expensive. So I would go for the cheaper option uh, that also has a higher ceiling because as good as Brandon Ayuk is, he was not the prospect that, that Romo Dunze or Malik Neighbors are. And I think that those guys are as close to surefire at the wide receiver position as you can get outside of a Marvin Harrison Jr. And again, no draft pick is surefire. That's part of the nature of the beast of the draft, right? But I think Romo Dunze or Malik Neighbors, if you could trade up to nine with the Chicago Bears and land one of those guys or trade up to eight, wherever you need to get to, as long as you're not like trading away the farm to land Odunze or Neighbors, yeah. I think that if you could give up reasonable draft capital to land a guy that is as close to can't miss as they are, I would do it. Absolutely would. I think that that would be a lot of fun for the Jaguars, for the fan base, and certainly giving Trevor Lawrence a weapon like that. Obviously, two different skill sets, but both of them are very enticing. Carlos asks, Are there other possible trade targets at wide receiver that would make sense for the Jaguars? Um... 
other than the two that we all know about, T. Higgins and Brandon Ayuk. For me, any of the studs from the 2021 NFL draft class that teams maybe don't want to sign long-term, which I don't know why they wouldn't, personally. Um, you do have Jalen Waddell in Miami. They're already paying Tyreek Hill. Do they want to pay both of them? Demonte Smith in Philly. You already have A.J. Brown. Are we paying both of those guys? Um, so I think you could be sniffing around about that 2021 wide receiver class if there's any guys that you know are going to be due up for long-term deals soon that the teams don't really want to ink. So maybe. It would be, it would be surprising, though, for me. Um, I think that would probably be most likely after the draft. And again, only if they don't land a wide receiver that they're really excited about. I think that they're ready to go into this draft. I think they are. I think they're ready to try to land cornerback they're excited about, wide receiver, uh, maybe a, another defensive piece, you know, up front edge or defensive line and fortify that offensive line. I think that's going to be their plan in the NFL draft. We will see how it plays out, but I really appreciate you guys dropping some questions over on Twitter. Appreciate y'all turning tuning in, excuse me, and supporting the channel. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. Y'all have a good one.